Okay, I'm going to start this off with a fun fact. Did you know that the mechanism in your brain that allows you to recognize that the theme of Darth Vader emanating from your cell phone indicates that your mother is calling is the very same mechanism by which people develop cocaine addictions and alcoholism? That's a bit spooky to think about, isn't it? I promise I'm not lying to you, though. It's a process called associative learning, and whether you realize it or not, you do it all the time. Associative learning is exactly what it sounds like. It's a kind of learning where you form an association between two or more things. These things in the business are called stimuli, and they can be almost anything. A sound, an emotion, an abstract concept, a mental image, you name it. The classic example of this, of course, is Ivan Pavlov and his dogs. For those of you who aren't familiar with Pavlov, the basic gist of it is that this Russian scientist named Ivan Pavlov trained his dogs to drool like mad whenever he rang a bell. How? Simple. Every time he was about to feed them, he rang this bell. Pavlov did this for several weeks, but it didn't take that long for the dogs to realize that the ringing bell meant chow time. That sounds obvious and kind of silly. Those of you who have dogs know that the instant you reach for the kibble, they start flipping out. But the implications of Pavlov's experiments are huge. A hilariously simple process, repeatedly presenting the food and the bell at the same time, formed an association that the dogs kept for a really long time. Pavlov decided to see what would happen when he rang the bell without feeding them, and the first time he did it, drool mania. Of course, the dogs expected food. But he kept ringing the bell without producing food, and after several trials, the dog stopped salivating when they heard the bell because it no longer predicted the arrival of food. That also seems fairly obvious. But what baffled Pavlov, and continues to baffle scientists today, is that several weeks after the dogs had been trained not to drool at the sound of the bell, Pavlov rang it one more time, just for giggles, and was astounded to see that some of the dogs started drooling. That means that the association they had formed was still there, even in though they demonstrated that they knew, yeah, okay, the bell does not mean chow time anymore. This phenomenon is called spontaneous recovery, and we still don't really know how it works. What we do know, though, is that these dogs were perfectly healthy when the experiment was run. There was no brain damage that would make them forget the bell does not equal food association that they had formed with the latest set of trials. That means the first association they'd made that the bell predicted the food was still there and still active. After doing dozens of other more complicated experiments on this phenomenon, modern psychologists and neuroscientists have determined that the reason the old connection still exists, despite being apparently overwritten, is because, contrary to science fiction movies, you cannot actually erase your memory. It's impossible to completely get rid of an association you've already formed, and the more you enforce it, either by repeating the pairing of the stimuli or by having really appealing stimuli, the harder the association is to ever forget. What does this have to do with addictions, you ask? I mentioned at the start of this alcoholism and heroin. What, what does this have to do with anything? That's easy. Drugs like heroin and alcohol produce a flood of signals in your brain that tell you, hey, this is great! It's not, of course, but your brain perceives these drugs as a good thing, the same way it perceives food as a good thing. So it learns to associate the behavior of drinking or shooting up with the high that follows. That means your brain chemically encodes that these behaviors are good and pleasant, even though the damage to your body is really severe. That is, as we say in the business, scary. Your brain will make this connection even when you tell it not to, because the association between the behavior and the high is so strong. That's what makes addiction so hard to break. Even when you want to stop, your brain just won't listen. Even after sobering up, and detoxing, and sometimes years of therapy and rehab, the association is still there. And it's so strong, we don't know if it can ever be broken. To put it in even simpler terms, addictions are learning something too well. That's very spooky. Well, in any case, I'm out of time, but thank you for listening, and I hope you've learned something. <laughs>